calling in from Metrics Learning. Um, so today is the QuickBooks program final review session. So what I'll be doing today is giving you some information about the certification exam, reviewing the exam objectives, and then um, answering any questions that you have through the Q&A. So as I mentioned, first I'll give you some certification exam information. Then I'll be going over the exam objectives. So what that is is the QuickBooks exam objective document that we sent you at the beginning of this program. Um, and then later we'll go into the open Q&A session. So to start out, I'm going to give you some information about the QuickBooks 2012 certification exam. This exam is 50 multiple, question, multiple choice questions and is 50 minutes long. So think of it as about a minute per question. With the exam itself, if you need to skip over any section, um, if you don't know the answer to something right out, what you can do is um, flag that question for review at a later time. So um, if you know a question right off the bat, that gives you more time to answer the later questions. The passing score for the certification exam is a 700 out of 1,000, so a 70%. This means that you need 35 total questions correct. And the exam is administered by a Certiport, which is a certification testing company. You will go to Work to Future in the Assessment Lab. They are a Certiport authorized testing center. So now I'm going to go over the exam objectives. Again, this is a document that we had sent you at the beginning of this program. Um, the exam objectives consist of 10 different sections and the percentage of questions that each section makes up on the exam. So I'll review these now, and this is something I highly recommend reviewing at a later time. So the first section you'll be asked about for the exam objectives is QuickBooks Setup. This is 6% of the questions that are asked. I think this is about three questions. You will need to know what information is needed in order to set up a QuickBooks file. So in order to create a company through the Express Start in QuickBooks, you need to know basic company information and to know general operations within the company. You'll need to know how to start a new company data file in QuickBooks through the Easy Step interview, how to keep the lists and preferences from an old file while removing transactions, how to customize the home page through preferences, and how to set up lists, so this includes customers, vendors, items, and so on. This will include understanding what names and items should appear on which list. Item number two is QuickBooks Utilities and General Product Knowledge. You will need to know how to navigate or move around QuickBooks using the home page, menus, icon bar, and so on how to back up and restore a data file by going to File, Open or Restore Company, how to determine the release number and how to update QuickBooks, how to use QuickBooks in single user and multi-user mode by going to File, Switch to Multi-User Mode, which versions and editions of QuickBooks are available for a specific year, how to password protect QuickBooks in Company Setup Users, and how and why to use preferences. Item number three is list management. This makes up 6% of the questions asked. You'll want to know how to manage lists, including customers, vendors, items, and so on. List management will include adding new entries, deleting entries, editing entries, and merging entries. Remember, if you want to merge an entry, you'll want to rename the list entry that you would like to merge. And I uh, recommend going to pages 30 to 32 of the day one manual um, that reviews this uh, topic and item. Um, item number four is items. It is 8% of the questions asked. You will want to know how QuickBooks uses items to perform the necessary accounting entries, the different types of items, and when to use each type. Chapter 5, page 48 of the day one manual goes over this how to use items for different sections of scenarios, which includes companies that sell, products for a specified price, services for a specified price, unique products or services that have different prices for each sale, or one service or product. Um, you'll want to know the difference between inventory parts, non-inventory parts, and inventory assembly as well. And pages 40 to 48 of the day one manual has this information. Item number five is sales. This is 10% of the questions asked. You will want to know 
who should be listed in the customer center. Um, also, you'll want to know the five ways to record sales, which are invoicing, sales receipts, statement charges, deposits, and Excel or Peachtree or another um, comparable um, and uh, comparable program to compatible program to QuickBooks. Um, you'll also want to know how to navigate and use the customer center, how to complete the workflow from the sale to making the deposit for invoicing and sales receipts how QuickBooks uses the undeposited funds, accounts receivable, and checking accounts in the invoicing cycle, how and why to record a customer credit, how and why to create statements, and how to handle bounced or NSF checks if someone writes you a bad check. Item number seven is purchases, or 10% of the questions asked. You will want to know who should be listed in the vendor center. Remember, a vendor is anyone you pay. So this can mean subcontractors, utility company, your landlord, tax agencies, suppliers, and so on. You'll want to know how to navigate and use the vendor center and the different workflows for making purchases, including entering and paying bills, writing checks, using a credit card, and using a debit card. You'll want to know how to record transactions in the purchase workflows, how and why to record a vendor credit, how to complete the inventory, work, inventory workflow from purchase order to payment, how to set up, collect, and pay sales tax, and bank reconciliation. Uh, item number seven is payroll, which is 12% of the questions asked. I made sure to review day two, chapter five, uh, the day two manual, chapter five for payroll, which goes over this very well. You will want to know the differences between the payroll services available from QuickBooks, so this is basic, enhanced, assisted, and direct, how to set up the payroll, including employees, federal and state taxes, and basic payroll reduction using the payroll wizard, how to set up an employee's earnings and sick or vacation time, how to track sick or vacation time, incurring hours and using banked hours, how and why to set up payroll schedules, how to run payroll or pay your employees, how and why to pay payroll liabilities, how to prepare payroll forms, including 941, W-2, and QuickBooks, and how to track time and use it for payroll or for invoicing customers. Item number six, number eight rather, is reports. This is 16% of what is asked. So the majority of the questions on the exam will be from this topic. You will want to know how and why to use the report center, how to customize reports, including report modifications, collapsing subaccounts, and so on, using the customize report button, the basic question that each report answers and the basic understanding of each report, how and why to process multiple reports, how and why to send reports to Excel, including understanding and using the basic and advanced tab, and how to memorize reports. Item number nine is basic accounting, or 10% of the questions that are asked. You will want to know what the basic financial statements are and have a basic understanding of what they mean, the difference between cash and accrual reports, so remember, accrual-based accounting recognizes expenses and income in the period they occurred regardless if payment has actually occurred. And cash basis does not recognize items until they have actually been paid. You'll want to know how and why to set a closing date and how to enter a journal entry if asked to do so by an accountant. You won't need to fully understand what accounts do debit or credit. Lastly, item number 10 is customization and saving time and shortcuts, or 12% of the questions asked. You'll want to know how and why to memorize transactions, how to set up multiple users, and what level of access can be granted or denied, and how and why to create custom fields, including customers, vendors, and employees. So next, I'll give you some information about practice tests and testing information. So once you complete all the training and metrics learning, you'll receive a voucher along with three practice tests. 
In addition to this, we have additional practice you will receive for the QuickBooks certification exam. This practice is optional, but it's highly recommended. So the two practice items you'll receive are the following. The QuickBooks quiz questions through QuizStar. So what these are are two 50 multiple choice question quizzes. There are questions just like on the certification exam. Um, and then also you'll receive access to a practice PDF with 100 practice questions. There's two versions of this PDF. Both, um, both the practice questions with answers and without answers. So depending on how you would like to take these practice um, questions, you can do that either with or without. Some people choose to do the quiz star questions, and then some people choose to do the practice questions from the PDF. Both of the different types of practice consist of the same exact questions, so it depends on the type of practice that you would like to do. So, um, as I mentioned, with the voucher, you'll receive three practice tests. These practice tests from CertiPort directly replicate the certification exam. Um, they are one-time use only, so it's like having three shots at the real thing before you take the exam. The practice tests can be accessed from a home computer, but they do require that you download a browser lockdown from CertiPort.com. We'll send the download and access instructions in a practice test email that goes out. If you have um, a Mac or if you use Internet Explorer 11, the only caveat with these two, um, you know, with Macs and then with this Internet browser for IE 11 specifically, is that the practice test will not work on this. So if you do have either of those, please let us know. We can send you some further information. In addition, here is some testing information. So as I mentioned, exams will be at the Work to Future Testing Assessment Lab, and they will take place on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. To arrange a testing time and date, you will want to contact Sunita here at this email or at the phone number listed. We will also send this information out um, along with the recorded version of this webinar later today or first thing tomorrow. So at this point, I am open to any questions that you have. You can feel free to put them in the chat box listed. Also, I want to bring up something that someone had mentioned to me previously in a different training session. Um, some people are completely finished with training. Some people are just kind of finishing up on the different activities. Um, when you take the Prove It 2012 and Prove It 2011 uh, assessments, you are able to view the score that you get um, in your My Plan. And if you don't get an 80% or higher, you're able to see a report for the different questions that you got wrong. So if you fail to prove it the first time through, which don't be alarmed, um, you can take the activity as many times as you want to get the score that you wish. What you can do is go to your My Plan, click on the assessment name, and then at the bottom of the page you'll see both the score that you got and then a link to the Prove It results. So what this will do is it will bring you to Prove It's website. You can see the score that you got on the different activities um, as well as um, the different topics that each are in. So you can see what numbers you got correct, the different topics that they were in, and um, from here you can go ahead, go back into the assessment and retake it. The course or the assessment question order does not change. So if you see that you got number two wrong here, when you go back into the assessment, you can take a look at the question, what you put for the answer, and then deduct and see um, what the correct answer would be for you there. So again, you can go back into those Prove It activities and retake them as many times as you would like. So um, at this point, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat window here. All right, any questions at this point? All 
All right, so I'm just going to kind of give some information here um, while there are no questions. So with the certification exam, some people have been asking, um, do you find out on the spot if you pass? And what happens if you don't? You will find out about one or two minutes after you take the exam whether or not you passed. So it's very helpful to have that um, information. All right, let's see here. We have a comment that someone can't hear me. All right, can you hear me now? Okay, so we have a question here. I have taken 2011 and 2012 several times, and I keep getting the same questions wrong. I copied the questions into Word. Can I send them to you? So you can feel free to send those to us, and we can get some information. Um, again, we don't really want to um, you know, give too much information, but we can kind of explain um, you know, what the correct answer would be for you. So feel free to send them um, in an email. Can everyone hear me okay? All right. So I got a message here that someone is unable to hear at this point or see the slides. So um, I will be. Um, I will be sending a recorded version of this out. So um, you know you can access this kind of after the fact. And for the person who just sent me that they got here, if you can just you know message me or put your name in the slot where I asked for your name so I can take roll call, that would be very appreciated. Thank you. And if you don't pass the certification exam, this is another question that I've had today, um, with the voucher that you get, you get a retake. So if you don't pass the first time, you will be able to see the questions that you got wrong, um, the different topics, rather, where you got questions wrong. Um, and then from there, we can help you out. We can you know, give you some additional practice if needed. And you will have 30 days to retake the exam. And because your metrics learning license is a 90-day license, you will still have that time to review the different topics and um, the different resources that we give you. All right, please put your questions into the chat. I will keep talking in the meantime. Um, something that I found helpful when reviewing for the exam. So the QuizStar practice quizzes, um, those are the 50, the 250 question multiple choice quizzes. Those are not timed, but what I did was I timed myself for 50 minutes because again, it is a timed test, but I know that some people find difficulty in that. So I made sure that I was um, you know, finishing the questions within the 50 minute time period. And then also for the free practice test that you receive through Certiport, um, you will be able to basically directly replicate not only the exam, but kind of the layout of it. Um, of course, you can see the answers to the questions after you answer them in the practice, which you won't be able to in the normal exam. But you'll get some practice with the timed aspect, as well as the wording of the questions. So the exam is not meant to trip you up at all, but it is more difficult than the practice that you get. So with the different practice items, including those prove it, the optional um, quiz star PDF documents, as well as those three practice tests, um, we try and give you as much practice with the multiple choice, as well as the wording that you'll see in the certification exam.
All right, please keep your questions coming. No questions? And if you do have one, I'm sure that someone else on the line must as well. So feel free to ask. All right, please keep your um, questions coming. We've had a couple of good ones here. Um, really good attendance, and thank you all for being here on the line. Did anyone access the final review, re recorded review webinar? Um, the one we sent through YouTube for the um, email or has anyone access that? Did you find it helpful? The one that recorded and reviewed day two of training? All right, it sounds like someone has a few questions here. Feel free to send them off, everyone. All right, good. It seems like we've got the questions flooding in here. Keep them coming. <laughs> All right, so we've got a couple questions coming in here. Um, and a comment, thank you. Um, we have someone who said that they accessed the webinar on YouTube and that they're getting used to the meeting style, um, and that they're new to it. I know a lot of people are with this webinar thing. And um, you know, while well, it's all virtual, we try and get people as engaged as possible. So thank you again for that feedback. We have a question here. Does the repeat exam have the same questions? That is something I am not sure of. So I think that you're asking if the retake for QuickBooks has the same questions. Um, if this is what you're asking, please let me know. Okay, and we have another question here. What does non-posting mean in a purchase order? Basically, because it's not paid yet, um, it doesn't post to your financial transactions overall because it's a purchase order. And we have someone, I have an access to YouTube video. I just saw it when I was trying to find the access code for the webinar. Don't worry about that. We will be sending out um, the recorded reviews for day one and day two along with the recording for this webinar. Um, and then the question was, does the repeat or retake exam have the same questions? I'm not sure if the answer to that because I actually did not take the retake exam myself. But I think what they do is they have a pool of questions, and some of them may be the same, but some of them may not be. So um, I would plan for them not being the same exact ones, though there may be a couple of repeats. Keep the 
questions coming. Another thing that I'll suggest too, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but with payroll, that's something that I really realized I did not um, excel in or know very well when I was taking the practice test. So what I recommend doing is um, with both the practice test and the practice you get through the different things we feature, if there's a question or a topic you don't understand, I would go into the day one or day two manual and um, and I would, um, you know, kind of go over the different topics. If it's on your computer, you can do Control F and look for the different topics. I also was big on going to QuickBooks, Intuit QuickBooks support site. Um, they have um, a different an area where you can kind of search by topic, uh, different things, and they have step by step. They have good explanations. So. I did refer to that too. So whereas payroll was the subject where I got the least amount of questions right at first, it's the one where I actually ended up getting all the questions right in the exam. So that was um, a small accomplishment and hopefully I know payroll better now. And we have a question here regarding non-posting. Um, the specific question we have it here um, for the prove it and the one that you were asking I believe is um, on non-posting purchase orders, which of the following indicates what the term non-posting means in relation to a purchase order? Um, the, to, the answer to that is a non-posting non in relation to a purchase order means that it does not affect the books or finances. So um, that is something, again, that's a specific on the Prove-It, and if you do have any questions about Prove-It questions specifically, please email them to us. So we can get back to you with the responses and kind of more of a you know better response here. We have a question here. Since I missed most of the webinar, will I be able to see the questions you had shown on the slides? I will be sending a recorded version of this. I also can send a PDF, if you wish, um, of the different slides in this presentation. I did that for a previous one, too, because people are big on notes, much like myself. So I can send that PDF to you in addition to this uh, recording. And I'll be sure to do that. I'll send it to all of you. And another question, are the questions on the exam similar to the Prove It test? They are similar, but they're not exact. Um, you know, there's multiple choice, A, B, C, D, just like the exam. Um, a lot of the wording is very similar. Some of the topics are similar. But the most similar thing you will be taking are the three practice tests that you get with the CertiPort voucher. Um, so again, the, what people I know really have difficulty with is the verbiage because they kind of ask you things in a specific way as you did see with the prove it. So we make sure to give you tons of practice with that. And you're welcome. All right, keep the questions coming. We got a bunch all at once, so it was nice. And if there's something that you think of after this, or even after you view the recorded version of this webinar, as always, feel free to shoot us an email, um, or you know, support ticket, phone call, what have you. And yes, I will be sending the PDF to all of you along with the recording of this webinar. So you have someone that says, no questions at this time, um, and that is fine, and thank you for being here. All right, I'll give it a minute or two, then we'll go ahead and wrap up.
All right, we have a comment here. Thank you for the webinar. Very useful. Um, thank you for being here, and I'm glad that you found it helpful. We'll give it about 30 more seconds. How good are the questions on the test? Um, I think that means maybe how difficult. They are They are pretty tricky. I mean, they're not meant to completely throw you off, and throw you for a loop, but um, they're very similar to what you'll see in the practice that you have um, in the practice exams. But just make sure to really know the topic. All right, any further questions? We have a couple more seconds here. And if you are having any issues with asking questions or things like that, um, any issues with this chat box in particular, feel free to just shoot us an email. We can address things on a person-by-person uh, -person basis, too. All right, well, at this point, we're going to go ahead and wrap up with this webinar. Again, if you do have any questions, feel free to send them through email phone, chat, and so on. Um, and thank you again so much, everyone, for being here on the line. Um, best of luck with your training and getting prepared for the certification exam. And we're looking forward to helping you with this process. And have a great rest of your afternoon. All right, thanks again. Goodbye, everyone.